Uh, me too. <laughs> I know I'm not well any closer than Yeah. <laughs> and that's the first verse. No? <laughs> well, we get it. Well, I'm old, I'm not wealthy.
Someone have a testimony. Anybody? Tennessee, put a lot of miles on, We're sun, it was in the all day Sunday, pretty well all we done was ride around, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I was telling Larry back there before church, it took four hours for us to go through Cage Cove, that's an 11 mile loop, it took four hours, I told Rhonda, I said they got to be something up ahead of us. Hope everybody's windows is rolled up because it's a duck grounding out there. Uh, because uh, I said everybody's stopping. I said they're not supposed to be stopping. I mean, I was getting a little frustrated. I just told you like this. You're acting like Chris was a little maybe getting a little rage. Uh, uh, I was getting a little road rage. And, uh, anyhow, uh, got up there and there was a bear down over in a field and that Rhonda got to see her first live bear that's wild. We saw him in a cage before but other than going to the other end of the house and looking at a wild bear, that's the first one she's ever saw. <laughs> All right. Revelation chapter 21. We start at verse 7 or ended at verse 7? We ended, didn't we? All right. Verse 8 says, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars 
shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Who does that cover when it talks about, why? number one, why are these people fearful? I mean, how many in here fear God today? Now, it's a reverence fear, all right? I don't serve God out of fear. I serve God out of love. But I have a, a respectful fear. Maybe that's the word I should use there. So in that sense, we all have that. True? Yes. Knowing that God can destroy both body and soul in hell. But these fearful are the ones that they're, they're afraid simply because they didn't live right. Notice the next, the unbelieving. What does it mean to be unbelieving? Unbelieving in what or who? Not God. Christ. He that hath the Son hath life. This is in John chapter 3. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son shall not see life in this world or in the world to come. But, the, or and, the wrath of God abideth upon him because he hath not believed in the only begotten of the Father. So it's, you've got to understand this. The only thing that will get you into heaven is complete, total, total belief and trust in Christ and the finished works of Calvary. When he said it's finished, that means there's nothing else that I could do or you could do to inherit eternal life except believe in him. He paid the debt that he didn't know. And I owed the debt that I could not pay. What's wrong, bub? You hurt your finger? Oh, Lord, have mercy. You had a car right here. Looky here. Right there. All right. Oh, he's better now. All right. Next verse, verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife, and he carried me away in the spirit into a great high mountain and showed me that great city and the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So what is the bride? The lamb's bride. Notice the word lamb's bride. What is the lamb's bride? That's me and you. It's not that he didn't listen. He didn't, he didn't come to die for this city. He didn't come to give his life a ransom for this city. He came and gave it for me and for you. We are the bride of Christ. If we would go back into Revelation chapter 4, I believe it is, uh, it, it tells us there uh, about the, the bride. So anyhow, uh, verse 10, we done read 10, verse 11. And having the glory of God and the and her light was like unto a, a stone, most precious, even like unto a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Now, remember, to get this picture, remember Moses, I think it was last week I, I alluded to this, Moses saw the backside of God or of Christ, the, the precarnate is the word that they use for that uh, pre-birth, whatever you want to say, when he saw there on top of that mountain, he saw the hinder parts of God and a veil was put over his face. Right? Because his face shone, scared the people. When you and I see, the, see God ourself, when we bear his image, the Bible scripture said, well, if we as born the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. When we bear his image, in other words, our faces will shine bright as well, because we are in his presence. Not that I'm anything special, not that you're anything special, but his, that Shekinah glory is what it, the term is used to describe the glory of God, the brightness, that Shekinah glory. And here it's talking about the Lamb's bride, again, being the church, and the, uh, this and that, that Shone like unto a precious, even a jasper stone, 
clear as crystal. And if you've ever saw, you go in Walmart or any of them places and you see these birthstone rings or necklaces and jasper is a clear stone. Why clear? Does that mean we're a ghost? Remember Casper? I mean, he was clear. You could see right through him. Does that mean we're... No. We're, we will have a body. I think what this referring to when it talks about being clear here is that there's nothing there to hide anything. There's nothing to hide, period, right? Can it be like pure? Like no sin or anything like that? Pure. Uh, again, this... this When you, when you get a hold of a real stone, whether it be a diamond or an emerald, if you've been around the real ones, regardless of what they are, and then you come in contact with the uh, fake ones or the, uh, what is the word I'm looking for here, where they, okay. imitation, you know the difference. And this is, you know, again, you, this is likened to that. In other words, it is pure. Uh, when you go buy a diamond, you don't go buy a diamond looking for a piece of coal inside of it. You want that diamond, you don't want it cloudy, right? You want that sucker to shine and knock her eyes out. Ain't that right, Will? That's right. You, you want the clear... Here we have to see a picture of that. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And again, the, uh, the, the Lamb's Bride is the church, but this is talking about the city here. High and had 12 gates, and on the gates 12 angels and names written up there upon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Uh, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates. In the wall, the city had 12 foundations, and then in the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And they had, uh, uh, he that talked with me had, in his, uh, had a golden reed to measure the city and the gate thereof as a, as, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length as large as the breadth. And the measure of the city with the reed was 12,000 furlongs. And the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. So in other words, it's a cube. Right? If you looked at a, U a Rubik's cube, every side on it is the same side. Regardless of how you turn it, it's the same. And that's what it's talking about with this city. But it talks about the three gates on each side. Why is there 12 gates? Couldn't hear him, so I was like, If we would go back in the book of Exodus and study how when they said the tabernacle up in the wilderness, what would we find about the, tr the tabernacle and the 12 tribes? If you looked, that, that when that... Uh, Tabernacle was set up, if I remember right, it was 50 uh, cubits by 100 cubits. But as it was set up, you had three tribes here, three tribes here, three tribes here, and three tribes here. Three on the north, three on the east, three on the south, three on the west. Just like what we see in this city. Except there was only one door into that tabernacle. Here, wrap your head around this again. When we think about heaven, all we think about is that city. Remember, there is a new earth there, and wherein dwelleth righteousness. Know ye not that the saints shall rule the world? There's going to be an earth to inhabit as well as a new heaven, a new, a new city and a new heaven. And that city comes down from God out of heaven, lands on the earth. And all the people from the earth, regardless of where they come from, can come into that city and go out of that city 
as they please. This, this city is on the earth. It's not setting in heaven. It's on the earth. You get that? So, any questions or comments? And he measured the wall there of a hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper and the city was of pure gold like unto, uh, unto clear glass. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper and the city was, city was, we think of, well, we think of the new heaven or the new city Jerusalem, we think of a street. Right? That's paved with gold. That's what we sing about. Do you hear what this said about the city? I realize the walls are jasper. I realize the foundation of 12 stones are different, 12 different stones. But inside that city, when the Solomon dedicated the temple there in Jerusalem, Everything inside that temple was overlaid with gold. In other words, whatever board they built, whatever socket they built, everything in there was gold. There was a, uh, the brazen altar was actually in the outer court, but I'm talking about in the holy place and in the most holy place. It all was, was uh, overlaid or made with gold. Here in heaven or in this new city, Think about a mansion that's made of gold. Think about that. We're not talking about a cabin. You know, Ron and I, when we drive, one thing we like to do is look at houses. I mean, look, look at that. I mean, look how good that house looks, or that house over there. Or, Ooh, I wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you. God's blessed me. And I'm not here to judge anybody uh, about where you live or anything like that. Thank God we are the richest country in the world and we've all got a roof over our head. None of us living in tents that I know of, right? So as we're blessed, but think about this new, new uh, uh, heaven and new, new earth and this new city where the city is pure gold and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Their first, stone, uh, first foundation was jasper. The second was a sapphire. What color is sapphire? Red. It's green, isn't it? It's green. Huh? Emerald's green. That's right. It's blue. Sapphires are blue. That's right. And the third was a chalcedon. The fourth was an emerald, which is green. The fifth was a sardix. The sixth was a sardis. And the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, uh-huh, somebody else can say that, I can't. <laughs> and the eleventh, what was it? Turquoise? No, C-H-R-Y-O-S-P. Cyspirus? Chrysophis? Chrysophis, the eleventh, a... a Jason and the twelfth, am amethyst. And amethyst is, by the way, that's the February birthstone, the real light purple, right? So why would God build this city with all these precious stones, a wall made of jasper, everything inside that wall is gold, uh, and... Uh, Why would God do all that? Gates made of pearl, that's what I meant to say. And gates made of pearl. Why would God use all these precious things like that? I mean, to you and I, these are uh, just riches, right? When Solomon, again, when Solomon built the house of God, everything that went in it was the most costly stuff that you could find. Okay? Did that, did that please God? Did that hold God? Did it make God any more God because of what Solomon did? So I, it, 
Possibly, maybe God's saying, if they cared enough for me to build that, because I'm sure if we walked into the holy place of that city or that temple and looked at the walls that are overlaid with gold and, and everything that was blue, uh, uh, the blue curtain that had all the gold in, in it and golden latches and different things. And I'm sure we'd have been standing there going, wow. Right? It would have been a sight to see. Remember when they dedicated that house that the priest had to just stand still because God's glory came down and filled the house. They couldn't minister before the God. Uh, in other words, couldn't serve before God because of the glory of God. Here, the glory of God is going to be there, but we'll get to experience all the riches that God has. I really think that's what God's doing. That just, you know, just because we are His people. Now, Will, you love Scarlet. <laughs> Some days more than others. Okay. But you love her and you give her everything you can and the best of everything you can. I mean, I'm sure maybe, maybe you do drive through the campground and start looking into dumpsters and say, is there anything I can take home to my wife? <laughs> Give her a blood transfusion, Joe. There we go. <laughs> but you, you see my point? We give the best that we can afford, that we can get to those that we love. Again, this temple that Solomon built, Solomon didn't store up all this stuff. David did. For 40 years, David stored stuff. Everywhere he would go and he would win a victory, he'd bring that stuff and say, it's dedicated to the house of the Lord. We're going to build God a house. When he was told that he couldn't build the house, David didn't say, well, if I can't build the house, I'm not storing the stuff up. Like most of us Christians would. You know, if I can't get any glory out of this, David, you know what David said? He said, I'll never see what the inside of this church, this, this, this house is going to look like by God. He said, but when my son gets ready to build it, he'll want for nothing. He'll have everything he needs so that he can build God a house. That's how much David loved God. That's a lot. I mean, he did without things that, that they might have things, that God might have things. I'm just telling you. He put God first in all that he did. The scripture talks about David and said, there, only in, in the matter of, your, uh, of Uriah and his wife was David found faultless. Now, I don't know about you, that's a pretty good record. Now I realize there's that flaw there that people want to remember David for, but David was a man, that, he loved the Lord. David danced before the Lord and didn't care who's watching. When he got home, his wife looked at him and said, Didn't the king do marvelously in front of all the maidens today? He said, I wasn't dancing for them. I was dancing for my Lord. Whatever you do, do as unto the Lord or do unto the Lord. I saw, 22, and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Now what is a temple? Hello, is anybody out there? Derek, you're going, come on Derek, you're, you're a big college student here now, you're going to a Christian, Ohio Christian University. Tell us what a temple is. It is a dwelling place for paganism for deity before God, for God Almighty. It is a dwelling place. It's a dwelling place for deities or for gods. But at, get this, God is our dwelling place. How many like Psalm chapter 91? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow of his wings. Right? God and Christ are our hiding place. He is that temple in that city. But here's what's amazing about that. We ain't got nothing to hide from. There's no sorrow, remember? 
All tears have been wiped to the our eyes. There's no sorrow, no crying, no sickness, no death, no devil. You ever, anybody read in chapter 21 and 22 anything about the devil? If you do, it's the only mentions that he's cast into the lake. He can't bother us there. So why do we need a temple? Why do we need a temple if there's no devil? Why do we need a temple, a hiding place, a dwelling place, when God created mankind? Here's, here's the, I'm going to answer the age-old question for you. Why are you here? To bring glory to God. I don't care what you do in life, you're to, you're to do it for the glory of God. Now, I, I realize... You know, we, we, we can't be involved with sinful things. That doesn't bring glory to God. But we're to live our life to honor Him and hear, and to dwell in Him that He might remember. I will be their people. I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's what God said. I believe it was Revelation 19 that He said that, wasn't it? 19 or 21, I will dwell with them and be their God and they shall be my people. I will dwell with them. They will dwell with us. Every day before the fall, how much time elapsed from the time that God created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden until the day of the fall? We have no idea how many days was there. We don't know whether it was days, months, weeks, years, decades. We don't know. But we do know this. Every day God came down and he walked in that garden and he talked with Adam. They dwelt together. They communed. They had fellowship. They, they loved one another. But when sin came, God's not there anymore. Man was driven from God's dwelling place. Think about that. Man was driven from... Where, why? That, the garden, the, uh, that garden, there was a tree of life and a tree of knowledge of good and evil. God didn't tell them, don't eat of the tree of life. He said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because he knew, how many times, or how many times did you, or how many times have our kids, sure as we tell them not to do something because it's not going to be good for them, and they run and done it, or we run and done it. Because we're smarter than. That's about what happened with Adam and Eve here is they listened to somebody else and they thought they could get by and it ain't going to hurt nothing. You know what? You're not, you remember what the devil said? You'll not die. You know, you and I today, we don't walk around like, oh God, if I do this, is he going to zap me? We don't live like that, do we? No. Here's the thing, he could. But he don't. Because He loves us. He gives us that free choice. Now, there are parents that are there on, on their children, there's a, a, an app you can put on the inside of a car or you can put it inside of your child's phone and you know exactly everywhere that child goes. You know how far, fast that car drives, how fast they're taking the curves, whether they're speeding out and burning the tires, whether they're slamming on their brakes and stopping real fast. I mean, you... Now, either you can trust that child to do the right thing because you've taught it the right thing. But what do we do? Quick as we get outside... I know some boys that still do that today, don't you, Joe? <laughs> My grandkids even do it on their bikes and toys. <laughs> Just some about spinning them tires, ain't they, right? Just to smell the rubber. <laughs> <laughs> Keep Firestone and Goodyear in business. I don't like Goodyear tires either. Verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon, to shine in it for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Notice that. Didn't mention the earth now. Remember, we're not talking about the new earth here. All we're talking about is this city. Outside that city, the sun still shines. There's still morning and there's still night. Inside that city, 
there is no night. How many knows that if, if, if we didn't have night and all we had was sun, everything would burn up? If the earth couldn't cool down at night? I mean, your plants would just wither away and you'd wither away. And I mean, sun is good for you. Get too much of it. It hurts. Rhonda said, won't you put you on one of them tank tops to mail, uh, bail hay in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda. I had, I had a good farmer thing going. I didn't need that. <laughs> right, Johnny? That's all we need, ain't it? Verse number 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring, do bring glory and honor unto it. Wait a minute. I thought God did away with all of that. Think about what this is saying. And the kings of the earth to bring glory and honor unto it. The nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Who is that? That's God's people, whether they're Jews, whether they're however they got there. We just think about, oh, I've got that mansion over there and he's going to prepare a place for me there, and blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you, God's got a new earth for us to enjoy. We'll have tractors that won't break down. Yeah. Won't that be heaven, Johnny? <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what we will do in the new earth. I do know this: Adam dressed the garden. What does that mean? That means when the flowers got ready to fade away. He would pick off the old buds and put it right. You do that, ladies, with your flowers. When the old, when the new ones are getting ready to come on, you'll just pull them old ones off. That more new ones might come on. He had them dress that garden. What that entails, I don't know. Adam worked, but there was no sweat to it. When he got out of the kicked out of the garden, he said, "God said, now you earn your bread by the sweat of your brow. Work will be work. Why? Because the curse was put upon him." The curse was put upon the earth. Here there is no curse. Won't need to fertilize your hayfield, Johnny. Put any lime on it. I, I don't know what we'll do. Are we going to be continuously around the throne of God? I don't think so. We can. Anytime our hearts desire, we can. I don't know how we'll get there, but we'll just get there and we'll worship the Lamb as long as we want. But somebody's got to tend to the earth and the fullness thereof. Y'all probably ain't never heard that taught, have you? Gene, have you ever heard that taught that way? Somebody's got to tend to the new earth? Anybody? Because we don't think about the earth. All we think is about the new city. There's a new earth. And these nations, remember, that nations is... Plural. It means there's more than one. From a, people come from around the world, Johnny, to that city. Is that the last verse? No, I had to turn two pages. I got I got my Corbin Bible today. And it, there's three verses on this page, but there's a lot of commentary and stuff. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. There's that word nations again. They're coming from around the world to worship him. There shall be no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of Life. Who is that? But they that are written in the Lamb's book of life. Who's that? Me and you. All right, that's chapter 21. Any questions or comments? You just said the people that around all the nations. That's what this says. So can I, maybe I'm wrong. Because it's, you know, I'm 
I'm asking the question. So, you know, if you've got all these different nations, you know, they believe in a different God, but then maybe it's all one God. There won't be no different gods here. Every, all form of idolatry, all form of lying, all form of stealing or fornication or murder, anything that's got to do with sin is gone. Only God remains. What brought on the false gods was when Satan decided he's going to raise himself up and be worship of God. By the way, Baal, who is the god of a lot of the nations in the Far East right now, uh, the, the sun god, that's the bright angel. Who's the bright angel? Lucifer. They will he, Remember, him and all of his followers, they're in the lake of fire. There's nothing that defileth here because sin is gone. There's no devil to deceive. Nations. We, when we think about Christians, we just think about people here in America. We have brothers and sisters around this world. I have a guy in India right now that wants me to do a Zoom thing with him. He wanted me to do it at 9 o'clock uh, our time Friday morning. I said, man, I can't. I'm at work. And to preach to his congregation in India. We've got brothers and sisters around this world that we know nothing about. Every nation, there are people that love the Lord. Not one nation around this world is there not somebody there that loves the Lord. Missionaries have went. But you know, here's the thing. If there's not been a missionary, either nature itself teaches us there is a God. There is a creator that loves us. Amen? And then people don't have a law. And get, wrap your head around this because I ain't got it all the way wrapped. My, wrap, my head wrapped around it. Where there is no law, Sin is not imputed. Where's the law? What is the law? Here's the law and the prophets. I, I realize we're a law under ourselves, right? We're a law under ourselves. All right. Next.